black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Eat good, live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Back with another one for you today. Something we've never tried before, I've never tried before. Traveling down a road less traveled or untraveled at this point. We got the lady, the woman, the chef, the I don't even know what to call her, but her name is Mary. Mary Brown. I know you guys don't want to sit here and see me unbox everything, so in a matter of moments or a second, you're going to see all of this in front of me. So let's get to eating. And you know what? Just before we get to the goods, can we just stop and acknowledge something for a second? Can we look at Mary? Can we please have just a little gander at her? Does she not look like a snack? Like Mary is looking like a bit of a snack to me, like a wholesome snack, though, like hummus and veggies, something along those lines. Maybe she'll bake you like a country loaf. Um, she's definitely getting a swipe right on Tinder for me. Uh, depending on how this meal goes, she might get a super like. So anyways, I'm just saying, Mary's looking pretty fly. I am super jacked about this. I've heard nothing but good things about Mary Brown's um, through like this community and everything. I've watched videos of people eat it. I've never had the luxury of getting around to it. Uh, I've had, obviously it's uh, competitors and you know, I'm intrigued to see how it stacks up. Give you a rundown of what we got here just after I tell you that. Of course, we're going to get to the story about my potentially, I mean, it hasn't ever been confirmed, but killer murderer neighbor and uh, the story surrounding all of that. And you guys can be the judge of what you think after you hear the tale. I certainly have my own thoughts on it. It's a little sketchy. Like it's a, it's a pretty crazy tale. So anyways, what do we have in front of us? Of course, you know, I got to have the coleslaw you guys know i'm a sucker for popeye's coleslaw we'll see what mary's working with creamy coleslaw already charting high in my books because i love the creamy coleslaw this is some buffalo hot sauce they asked me if i wanted the wings sauce on the side i said side because i had a light travel to do we all know that when you sauce a wing then you let it sit we're gonna get the sog these have remained crunchy and we're just gonna sauce them as we go. Got a three piece chicken. So you have the drumstick. We have the white breast here, which is looking delicious. I cannot wait to get into that. And then there's a thigh under the sandwich and this sandwich is called the Big Mary. And you know, it's your standard lettuce, uh, mayo, fried chicken, probably white meat on a nice sesame seed bun. A little pickle on the top here. That's a nice little touch. And then the girl at the store, um, I was just like, can I add tomato? And she was like, yeah, for sure. Get on it. And then, of course, we got wedgies. Wedgies? 90s term? Does anybody say wedgie anymore? Like, that was such a 90s term. I don't know. I mean, they're still gross, but... Or painful? Anyways, it's neither here nor there. And then, of course, we got the ketchup. Mary Brown's and Heinz teaming up. And then of course we have the Louisiana style hot sauce. I'm thinking I have enough buffalo here that it's probably gonna do the trick, but see what happens. And of course you guys know I ride through the valley strapped with the ranch. Like it's just, it ain't hidden. It's very apparent. So out of, the t out of everything, I want to try the coleslaw almost first. And then the sandwich has just been playing on my mind for like some time now. So let's get into this coleslaw. I just, you guys know I'm a coleslaw guy. Okay. Cheers. Mmm. What? Wow. That is great coleslaw. It's got um obviously the cream creaminess to it. But it has a nice little tang on it too and a sweetness. Really everything the creamy coleslaw should be. Super fresh tasting too. That's fantastic. Super good. I need to get to the sandwich. Mm, let's do it like that. That's a good pickle actually too. So, there you go, looking nice. Lettuce is a little stacked in there, good. Got the tomato there, like I said. Dropping lettuce everywhere. Mm. 
Chicken is tender. Nice battery, nice flavor. Bun is super soft. Mmm, that's so good. The only thing I... You guys know me. I'm just a ranch fiend. Ranch and chicken. Everything I need. If I seem ravenous, it's because I am. I'm starving. I'm very, very hungry. I gotta go for a wedge. Nice crunch on them. A nice wedge, the seasoning is nice on them. I'm gonna hot sauce dip it. I don't know why, just feeling feeling crazy. Mmm, mmm, wow, that's a good hot sauce. It tastes kind of like Franksy, but it uses there's a little bit, a bit of a richness to it for sure. And I mean, on that note, you guys know this is my channel, we all know. I may be the undisputed wing king. I had to I had to get the wings just because I'm such a wing not snob, but you guys know that I'm a I'm a really wingy guy. It's like I told you it's like one of my favorite foods, so let's go for full submerge. You guys got the crayon on for that? Yes. Clean bone pull. Wow. That hot sauce is delicious. Super into that. Okay, the last thing to do is obviously try the try the fried chicken. It's looking great. I like the crisp on the skin and everything. Pull it, tender, moist, steaming. Come on. Oh, huh. that's craziness. Our chicken is juicy, tender, not crisp. I gotta say, to everybody out there <clears throat> that I've seen eat this who says it's good, you weren't lying. This is a good, uh, Good chicken place experience for sure. Why do I love coleslaw so much? Okay, let me refresh the palate. And I gotta get to this story. Cause we got a lot of time. We got a lot we got a lot to food to work on here, so 
we can definitely get to the story. I don't know what you guys call yours or whatever, but we call them cottages, camps, you know, place on the lake, lakefront property, whatever. So in my family, we have one of those. And, and they're very much a, you know, summertime, two months of the year, three months of the year, you go, you stay out there, and then you move back to town. And that goes for almost everybody who lives out there uh, for those amount of time. Like people don't like live out there because uh, where I'm from, there's a lot of snow. Da, 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 da. So it's unusual to ever be out there in the colder months like October. And this is going to tie into the tale uh, later on once we get to it. But anyways, so every summer we have this, our neighbor, and, you know, there's about... 100 200 yards of bush between you and your neighbors t between each place so anyways he's lived out there for years he is um a lawyer and his name's actually sandy zaitsev you can look it up as a whole thing there's like some video on youtube of him like trying to claim that he's crazy and uh things of that nature so he's a lawyer, so he knows his way around things and whatever, whatever. He's very wealthy, and uh, he was always known to be sort of a misogynistic, kind of creepy. Creepy vibe. But he had his wife and his one son. And um, I think she was practiced law as well. And, you know, when you live out in that community for a few months of the year, everybody, you know, the, the adults, the dinner parties and this, that, and the other. And it's a lot of, like, whispers and talks. And it was always known... That he and his wife had a lot of uh, a lot of marital problems, uh, a lot of issues surrounding their son. As he got older, he got really into like drugs and was just like a pretty like one of those kids who's like rich, uh, a single kid, only child, and you know just kind of going off the wall. So over the years, there had been mutterings, you know, about him and his wife, like, um, like abuse and stuff, domestic abuse, things like that, a lot about their fights and just all the drama kind of surrounding them, how she wanted to get a divorce, but You know, there's a lot of legalities in that, and, you know, he's got a lot of money and this, that, and the other. So, divorce was essentially imminent for these two. And so, about, I think, I want to say about maybe 12 years ago now. I just remember there was a day where it was like my parents were like um, this is in October like late October which is again what I'm saying it's not usual to be out there at that time because he has many houses and definitely one in the city but I mean whatever if it's you might go out there just to spend a weekend or whatever. So, I mean, it could be okay and seemingly normal, but it's a little suspicious. So one day my parents are like, it's all over the news kind of thing. 
like our local news, um, that the like Coast Guard and cops and whatever, police and all that are searching for the missing body of his wife and his wife's name was Marilyn. And so they had found her Sidu jet ski, but Sidu. Um overturned in the water upside down floating uh, with like the tether cord and all that like the thing that usually would be on your life jacket or your wrist that if you fall off it would stop the engine from running and stuff but they found the sea dew flipped over and da 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 she's missing he's reported her missing right halfway through the night or in the morning he reports her missing and so now there's this whole search on they find the sea dew and now where i live or where we are it's like it's lake superior it's huge it's a, and it's freezing even in the summer sometimes so so in october i've gone in october and it's immediately like your body just tenses up to the point where it's like you feel like you can't breathe so Anyways, where we are, there's like the lake here and then on the other side as well, right? It's just like engulfed by Lake Superior. So they find the sea dew that it's like not that far from home, but it's out in the open water where it's super deep and, you know, things could go wrong if you fell in, kind of froze up, couldn't swim to shore, drown, whatever. Maybe you didn't have the life jacket on, da 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 But this is a woman who's lived on this lake her entire life, essentially, and wouldn't be dumb enough to do really any of this. And would definitely know to wear her life jacket and have the tether cord for the sea dew and all that like she's very experienced like she's done it a long time so the official story that he tells the police and everybody is that he and her had a fight. They were out there for the weekend, trying to have a good time. They got in a fight. They were having a sauna. So they were saunaing, kind of jumping in the lake real quick, and then going back to the sauna. They were drinking wine. They kind of got drunk. A fight ensued between them. And he tells the police that she, in that moment, got super mad and was like, I need my space or whatever. Like, I need to blow some steam off and went, grabbed the sea and ripped off on the sea into the dead of the night in pitch dark into open water, open freezing cold October water. So that's the story. So now it's, she's presumed dead. No trace of her other than the sea dew. And now it's the search is on to find her body. Well, in a lake that big, a lake that deep, good luck. Next to impossible.
The other thing too, it's almost November in a freezing cold body of water. A little bit hard to uh, really do that. All the, the divers and everything, like it can only handle so much in terms of the elements. And also at this time of the year, the, the lake is really rough. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of waves, a lot of this, a lot of that. So they searched for a body for a good while. Like they didn't give up for, I want to say a couple weeks. Of course, nothing ever came of it. So, you know, everybody has their suspicions, but there is nothing to connect them to it. The story is good. There's no body. There's nothing, nothing just the sea do, you know, everything. There's just nothing to whatever. Like everybody just, it is what it is. We can't prove otherwise that anything else happened other than what he said. There's no way to know. So, about a decade later, later now, <clears throat> you know, he's, he's had his normal life, like nothing's ever happened to him in regards to that, but four years ago now, and then about a decade after that, I'd say roughly, his son, the problem child, the kind of druggy guy. He's, he was in his mid to late 30s when he died now. And it's so, there you go, said it out loud. But so now his son is dead. Okay, that's crazy. How did his son die? And he seemingly loved the shit out of his son, that's for sure. But. You never know, and this is what I think, but I don't know. There's a few ways this could go. And there's also a few ways that her supposed death or disappearance went down. Some people speculate that he straight up murdered her, set the whole thing up. Some people speculate maybe that actually did happen and that's just how she died. And then some people think that she planned her own like disappearance because she knew law as well and like wanted out of the relationship and knew it was like one of those scary situations where it was hard to get out of it and she sort of like set up a plan to die or disappear some people think that now with his son his son died the day of his death, he fractured like his ankle. Was at the hospital, got a cast. And what the obituary wrote and the official report of his death was an accidental death by head trauma by the he was at home alone and had this new cast on and he was trying to get to his kitchen to get a snack. And somewhere along the way, he fell, smoked his head and died essentially instantly. So... Now his son's dead. So now everybody's like, this is fucking weird. Like, how's this guy lose his wife and then his son too? I think either his son was deep in some drugs and got eliminated by like a local... You know, like Hell's Angels type thing. Or 
he had an actual freak death. Or, also, Mary's bringing some spice to the party. I'm probably looking kind of greasy right now, but it is what it is, guys. It's got to be. Or, I almost think in my crazy whole, like, to make this the most crazy mystery thing, like, or best murder story, would be he found some shit about his mom's death and then was, like, maybe going to, like, out his father about it. And his dad, like, had him hit. Because his dad's like, I'm not going to the jail for the rest of my life type thing, you know? His dad's pretty old at this point too, right? 60s. So then after that, I think it was just last year or maybe 2016. There's this whole scandal about him, the same guy. Comes out that he's been recorded on tape being like, because he has this um, new like step step that doesn't make sense new wife new wife he has a new wife and he has a stepdaughter essentially she's like 16 15 and it comes out that he got like recorded like being a pedophile essentially towards this girl and was like trying to do shit with his now like stepdaughter and like all this other stuff, like the sketchy stuff about also money and this, that, and the other. So he finally has eventually landed himself in prison, but only for a little bit. He's out now. And yeah, he, he's, well, because he's a lawyer and stuff, like, and he has money, and, like, obviously he's able to get out of it. But he had to do a little bit of time, and now he's whatever, whatever, has no respect, and everybody thinks the worst of him. And, and now I think it even confirms more that he's just such a creepy guy that I think even more so it confirms people's belief that he did pull all this other shit off. So if you actually want to look this up, it's Sandy Zaitsev. I don't even know how to spell it. It starts with a Z. Sandy Zaitsev. Thunder Bay. If you just type that in like Google or YouTube, you'll see like the video. You'll see all the stuff. Like you'll read about these deaths and all his, his weird crimes and everything. So, I may or may not nothing conclusive, but I may or may not have lived beside I'm personally known a murderer that it's technically on the loose, like never got caught for any of the shit. So there's that for you. I gotta say. This is delicious. It was a lot of food. The wings were on point. This sauce is amazing. So good. I'm super stoked on that sauce. This chicken breast is delicious, fresh, crunchy. Home fries, good. I just went light on them because I knew they'd fill me up. But I'm definitely going to save this for a late night snack down. You know what I'm saying? So... We're going to have to call that one here. Hope you guys enjoyed that story because, like I said, it's 100% true. Go look into it if you want. Um, until the next one, you know what you have to do. You have to eat good. You got to live well. You got to stay true. And don't murder people. Okay. Peace. <laughs>